Uh, and so we're, we're right into the Sermon on the Mount now, aren't we? Yeah? Uh, and uh, this is uh, uh, a section uh, which is uh, uh, not, can't get very emotional about, quite sort of nitty gritty. Uh, uh, and we, what we've got here is a section with four disciplines. Uh, the sexual discipline, verbal discipline, mental discipline, uh, and you could call the last part discipline within society relations. Okay? That, that's basically what the section, what, what we're dealing with here. The, the, first area where the Lord is, is really tackling something um, and he's particularly talking to men of course uh, that's why um, he, he, he says you know about committing adultery and, and, uh, and it's you know if, if a man looks at a woman and, and, but why because because that's that's more a male problem you know it's, it's, it's a male problem um, I, I, I can, you know, as young men, when I was with young men, you know what I mean, uh, the conversation uh, and uh, uh, etc. You know, that that is that is very much a male trait. Uh, and so, but of course, there, there is more to it than that because um, because of patriarchy uh, that has been right now through the ages, and particularly at the time that this was uh, said and written, um, uh, men had more power, therefore more power to be deviant. Okay? But now, that, 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 that's a... society is more... Um, doesn't have that patriarchy, and, and, and so the, the, the necessary um, Discipline is required, no, not just with men, but with women as well in our society, particularly as we know it today. Um, because it is, the, it is this gospel that has elevated women in society. If you look across the world, it is the Christian societies where women have been elevated. And, and are not in such a hell-down position uh, as in, in other societies. That's very much the case. However, there is a but to that. There is a but. Because it has produced problems um, as well. Uh, there, there, there is good to it and there is bad to it. Turn to Deuteronomy, this is the verse, Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. I'm missing Ruby this morning. Yeah, thank you, Joshua. Well done, Tom. Uh, yeah. But that's why, you know, that's why I like to wear a shirt and tie, you know, and that's why um, uh, I always commend Brother William and, 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 uh, and Ruby, you know, um, you know, you know, little Jenny, you know, she's so beautiful, but always she looks a little a proper little girl, and that's that. That's that is so good and so wonderful. And the boys look like like young men, you know. Um, uh, Brother Johnson and I about a year ago were having a conversation about um, uh, jewelry, uh, and, and, and my attitude was a lot more liberal, simply because it's it's a female thing, and they they. Let the ladies be ladies. Let them be ladies. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I, I got a cross on here, but I, I wouldn't buy anything like that. Um, it's just that uh, I have a, 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 an unsaved friend who, who, who thought, oh, well, I'll get that for Rob, you know. And so you, you accept things with grace, don't you, you see? 
I mean, I wouldn't buy that. In fact, I've actually spoken against wearing crosses before I've got a you know. Um, but, 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 you know, this is, this is part of what we're, we're dealing with in, 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 uh, in a general sense uh, uh, here in, in this. Now, um, yeah, there, there is in, when we're dealing with very, very important here in, in, in the Church of God, in the family of God, and in families. There is, there is an attitude here we, we need. Look, Matthew, just go to chapter 12, verse 31. Chapter 12 of Matthew, verse 31. Now we, we often use that verse in its um, in the necessary regarding um, speaking against the Holy Ghost. But the first part of that verse says, Therefore I said that every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven then. And, and we know within the family of God and in the families within the family of God, there is a need. For forgiveness in the area that we're speaking about here in, in sexual relationships where where um, there has been sin there needs to be forgiveness it, it is it is a, um, a, a major point and, and after that we're going to go on verbal um verbal uh, discipline in verses 33 to 37 um uh, yeah, let me just turn back because I, I need to. Okay, yeah, yeah. Talking about um, in our own society, we don't we don't tend to. I swear, so and so. We don't do that. that that's that's not that's something that we're we're used to. Uh, we're doing, but but I like that verse thirty-seven. Let your yes be yes, and your no be no. Uh, and whatsoever is more than these, is, it comes from the evil one. And that, that's that's that, that's a, a good way to be uh, to be thinking of us. Um, one thing that could be relevant, if you look just across to verse 22 of the chapter, I say unto you, whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be David a judgment. Whoever says to his brother, Raka, that means you fool, you know, um, is in danger of counsel, etc. Um, but that is, um, is something that uh, we need to be, um, uh, it, it, is, it is good to be mild in our speech. If you look at, again, chapter 12 on Matthew, go to chapter 12, now this is a verse. Um, Verse 36 and 37, chapter 12. Um, I have used this in a bus of mess room before now, and, 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 and the lads were absolutely astounded that they, they, they couldn't believe that the Bible said this. I say unto you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified and by your words you will be condemned. So that, that, that's, that, that, as I say, the, the lads in the message said, see, Rob, every idle word, you know, I've got to, yes, every idle word. Uh, 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 and, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's, um, it's, it's a good reason to be um, careful in your speech, that, isn't it? Yeah? When you think that every word uh, is, in the, is, is before the Lord. Okay. So we're going straight on now to mental discipline from verse 38. Uh, let's turn back again, sorry. Uh, verse 38. Uh, 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 we have the Old Testament uh, quote from uh, Exodus and Leviticus. Uh, and, and, and then we have the teaching of the Lord Jesus about our mental attitudes. What we're dealing with, we're talking about is 
when you have to deal with malice, that's what the teaching is about here. You're confronted with malice, malice straight in your face. How are you going to deal with it? Okay, that, that, that's, that's what we're talking about. Okay. Um, and you need to, you know, I've had to give up a, a television program that I really liked. Um, it was, it's a, it was a, a detective um, on a Sunday night. It was full two hours called Vera. Uh, and I used to love the plot and everything about it and everything. But what happened was I got um, unrighteously angry. I know there are any actors there, but the thing is, this is going on in society. Well, you know, it's, it's a very up to date thing. This. Uh, and, uh, I got unrighteously angry about it, you know what I mean? And, and the way I, that I would, I would deal with people without, without mercy, do you understand me? And, and uh, it, we've got to be careful of our mental attitude when we're dealing with others, okay? Um, yeah, all right. Um, because behind, behind your life, okay, um, there are promises. Uh, and there is no need for, for you work. because in, I'm talking about a normal society when you're not in a war situation. Okay, um, if you look at uh, just you know verses like Psalm 46, Psalm 46, one and two. Malice, you, you've got to realize that you, you know um, God is your refuge and strength, you know, uh, and, and you're not you're not you're not on your own. You're never on your own, you know. Uh, uh, and and uh, that, that, that's you know you you deal with people with that because in a manner you've got a trusting heart. You know, you know what I mean? And, and, and uh, He's not going to take you through anything you can't deal with. He's not going to give you the strength to deal with it. When, when I sat down in here this morning, I, um, um, the, the, just a simple thing came to me. Uh, um, my brother, his name was Hans Gunstra. He was, a, he was an evangelist. But he was, one day he was really, really down. You know, he was, he was really down. And he'd gone to a meeting where he thought he wouldn't be recognised just to sit that he, he needed to, someone to feed him, you know? Uh, and he sat at the back of the meeting and he was feeling down, he was feeling a bit, um, you know, angry with life and fed up and someone started to prophesy uh, and, and, you know, we're not a lot of anointing but they were, they were, they were using them. You know, uh, not a, a, a very full gifting, um, and uh, that they, they were prophesied, and the Lord is thy shepherd, thy shepherd. And he says, Yes, I am, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And suddenly it hit him, The Lord is my shepherd, He's my shepherd, I, I shall want, I shall want. And, 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 and the, the glory. And the presence of God became, became, in that moment, real to him. That the Logos became Rhema at that moment. Do you understand me? Okay. Uh, and, uh, and it became a now word for his heart. You know? Uh, and blessed him. Uh, and, and, and when he was recognized, uh, the pastor said, Oh, Brother Kunstrad, have you got a word for the people? He had a word for the people. He was, he, he, do you understand what I mean? The Spirit of God had met his need. Yeah, you know, because because well, the way we, you know, uh, there's another one, isn't it? Just turn to 56, Psalm 56. 56. What? Psalm 56, verse 4. What's that? Yeah. Yeah. 
I will not fear for flesh. So, so that so that this there's a mental attitude to dealing with with malice. Okay. Then then um, uh, the last part, 41 to 48. There we are. Um, we, we're dealing with, uh, I, I like 41, you know, whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Do you know, you know what that is, don't you? That's at work. That's at work. They want you to go, oh, can you do so and so? Well, you don't just do so and so, so and more and more. See? Yeah. That, that, that's a work thing there, yeah. Um, okay, um, one, yeah. Uh, what have I got? Proverbs 25, 21, 22. Have a look for me, really. Proverbs 25, 21, 22. things together uh, from, from the, the, um, the servant of the Lord. Um, he's looking at, he's dealing with self-seeking. That's what he's dealing with. He's not, he's, he's just in these areas of your life. Don't be self-seeking. That, that's the bottom line of it. Um, I, 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 it hit me, this has hit me more than once, you know, um, and, uh, and then I brought things back from my past, and I said, yes, well, self so said, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, in, in Romans, in Romans, where it's one or two, where he's dealing with, um, showing man how sinful he is, you know. Um, but it speaks of those who are self-seeking. Uh, and then, uh, in Romans 2, Romans 2, verse 8 talks about self-seeking, okay. But, um, uh, Now in, in verse 16 he said, he talks about the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. Now the secrets of men, what are the secrets of men? The secrets of men is secret thoughts. Secret thoughts. Okay. Um, um, because as people of God, we're looking to be conformed to the image of that cross. Okay. Uh, and at the bottom line is we are what we think. We say you are what you eat, you are what you think. Um, if you look 
Ecclesiastes, the last verse of Ecclesiastes. Now that's Ecclesiastes, that's like immediately after the Proverbs, isn't it? Okay? Yeah. So if, what, what's this saying? You know when we come to break bread, if we will judge ourselves, we will not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chosen to the Lord that we will not be condemned in the world. Uh, that's why I love the way we do the break of bread. I take my shoes off, I go over there, and I kneel down. And I've always had this sense, I think, of it being in the upper room. And the Lord Jesus coming to me, saying, This is my body, Lord, with you. Precious Lord Jesus. So, um, the practical, practical uh, issues of life, the Lord gave us, and He dealt with them as He deals with all things. God bless you. Thank you.